Hello everyone and welcome to the PythonInvest.com YouTube channel. Today we will talk about the passive investment with exchange traded funds or ETFs in Europe. We will be looking at more than 1000 different options. Um, we are doing this because it gives us a wide set of investment options and great diversification. From a technical perspective you will learn how to do web scrapping uh, with the Selenium. How are we going to do this? First we will uh, make some imports uh, of other libraries and make um, Selenium library work with Collab. Then uh, we will get the list of uh, more than 1000 unique identifiers or iSCENES um, to, to scrape. Um, then we will look at, at the one individual ETF page and scrape, scrape all um, uh, features uh, for that ETF. And then we will extrapolate that approach to get all data from all um, ETF pages. So before digging deep, uh, deeper into the details, I want to highlight why um, we use Selenium. Um, we, we had uh, previously some articles uh, on web scrapping and used HTTP requests uh, library and that uh, does static HTTP request, but um, that approach is not enough anymore. Um, let's see why. So we can open this link. It gives us a list of all ETFs uh, with distribution policy accumulation, accumulating uh, sorted by decreasing fund size. Um, and as you can see here, um, uh, there are many pages of, um, of these um, uh, entries, more than 40. And if you click different um, page uh, numbers or you click next, uh, you will have the same um, HTTP address. That means that if you want to query that uh, using a request library with this address, you will always see all uh, all ETFs that are listed on the first page and we obviously don't want to do this we want to get all of them that's why we are um, using Selenium to pretend um, that we are browsing from a web browser and clicking the next button all the time to get the next page <coughs> so let's uh, go uh, to, to the code um, here um, the import section, we install Selenium um, and uh, here is a nice article on Stack Overflow. You can read about uh, how we can use Selenium web driver in Colab. Then we also import some other libraries like Regex, Math or Pandas. And here um, we, we get the, the list of the unique identifiers. Um, the address is the same, um, more than 1000 um, different ETF options. We go there and we, we define the function called getLinks um, and that function uh, simply finds all um, tags uh, with class name equals link um, and we within those um, tags it um, extracts attribute href and within that attribute value it gets parameter icin. Um, so as you can see here uh, one ETF you inspect it and there is a tag um, A um, with a class name called link so we we get all possible tags with a class equals to a link and we try to get uh, this value for uh, href parameter and get ic um, number so uh, here as you can see um, we we define this um, um, function get links and, and got all links on one page and then um, we um, do obviously the same for all pages we start from page one uh, get all all links and uh, store it into the 
uh, dictionary uh, of uh, ICINs and HTTP links. And uh, this dictionary dictionary is uh, uh, gradually fulfilled with new and new um, ETFs. And after the page is finished, uh, we find the um, HTML element paginate button next and click that button. Um, we also don't want um, to, to, to click uh, that button endlessly even when um, all pages are finished. That's why we, we have uh, this, uh, this um, maximum number of um, downloaded uh, elements which is 1100 for our case because if you see here um, there is a, a page uh, number 45 and next uh, button is still there but it's it's not clickable uh, but you can click it uh, still you can try to click it uh, still with, within a web driver uh, so if if you don't use this it will never finish um, with with this uh, algorithm um, and um, um, as a result, you will have a links uh, underscore df data frame, and um, that data frame is saved to, to the file UETFs ICINs, which is used later or with, with uh, another iteration of this collab. So, this simply um, the um, same file that, that I download locally from my laptop if I don't want to run um, the previous uh, function again and uh, links that uh, underscore dev has 1058 different ETFs um, next we define uh, one um, uh, scraping function um, so uh, here we have one um, auxiliary function get percent from text uh, with different um, options and you can see here that um, we are converting um, all percentage points into the number when possible if uh, if it's not possible then we return not a number um, okay uh, here is the main function and um, uh, the, the code is attached to, to the video in a, in a description and you can check that and try to run it with any URL um, to see how it's working. Uh, the general idea is that there are different um, features uh, that we want to, to scrape. Let's open one fun value, one fun page. Uh, so we, we want to get uh, the latest quote. We want to, to, to see the minimum, maximum 52 weeks uh, interval. Uh, we want to know the investment strategy in the description uh, of the fund, uh, the expense ratio, the replication legal structure, and all of those values. Um, so before doing this we, we use another hint and um, this is um, called weights um, you can read about it um, so the idea is that um, we might need to wait until all um, code is uh, loaded and, um, and JavaScript is ex executed and um, the element that we want to wait actually appeared in a document object mo uh, model. We have different uh, elements here, um, span or we are waiting for a text uh, or with the investment strategy or quote or font size and we are waiting for all of those elements to be loaded and only then we do the scrapping. Um, so um, scrapping um, takes a lot of time and you need to play uh, many times before you, you get the, the correct query or correct uh, find element function call. Um, I um, had to, to, to do it differently. Sometimes I uh, try to find it by CSS selector 
you may need to learn, to learn CSS in order to do that or um, I uh, queried by XPath and I uh, was looking for a particular text uh, in, in that element because um, the structure of a website is not very reliable and um, HTML tags can be uh, quite um, different uh, every time you load uh, the page so I was um, hoping to, to find one uh, particular text like investment strategy and I um, got uh, the next sibling in um, document object model 3 um, to, to get the inner text um, of, of the investment strategy so here if you translate that into the um, simple language here is an investment strategy and we aim to get this description and we know that that description comes in the next sibling after the investment strategy is defined you can see it here inspect you can see that uh, we have div class this class name can be very different and you can't um, search uh, for that class name but actually after that div element there is a p element and we get inner text this is this description of that p element so by finding the investment strategy uh, element we we get the relative link the next uh, dom element and get value for that so this is very, this is a very useful technique because you don't rely uh, on the particular um, names of tags or uh, class names or um, parameters but you actually search for a specific text information on the web page which is uh, normally uh, very uh, constant and you are seeing the same um, paragraph names on, on the page so that's that's how we do all all different features uh, defined here and scrape and you can see that uh, here um, I call uh, the this function scrape one find profile um, with uh, the URL and with the parameter um, of a fund and uh, here is the result in, uh, in a dictionary we get uh, 52 weeks high low currency risk and uh, many other parameters um, that uh, will be transferred later into the pandas data frame and when we define this um, this function we can move on and um, uh, scrape all um, 1000 funds basically we are calling the same function um, many many times with different uh, fund icons you can see here that we got previously um, and store um, everything to the to the data frame so uh, we uh, initialize it first um, when there is no data frame and then we append every new record uh, to, to the data frame so in the end um, we have this uh, one 1057 um, lines and they they look uh, like this there is a name i seen ticker description and many parameters that we analyze in in another uh, call up um, uh, data frame um, but here we just um, um, save uh, the pandas uh, data frame into one file uh, csv and um, it is available to download later and analyze in, a, in a, another call up that's all thank you for listening and see you next time